released it today. It's called Business Boutique, equipping women to make money doing what they love. It's Christy Wright leading this charge. Rachel Cruz will be speaking. Stephanie Parker, the creator of Zip, Zippity Zip. Uh, my buddy Cordy, Cordia Harrington, the CEO and founder of The Bun Companies, affectionately known as The Bun Lady. Uh, Tiffany Peterson will be speaking on selling and marketing. Shannon Litton, uh, the president and CEO of 5 by 5 Marketing Agency, another marketing. Mari Smith, a social media expert, uh, literally is hired by Facebook to teach how to use Facebook. She's one of the top in the nation coming to this. Ellie Holcomb will be doing uh, singing and praise and worship and leading a devotional with us. And Jeremy Cowart will be one of the top photographers on the internet will be there there's going to be breakout sessions on marketing on taxes on accounting we're going to do a two-day thing equipping women to make money doing what they love christy wright has been with me this hour it's an exciting time for us you can get your tickets at businessboutique.com or daveramsey.com or you can call triple eight 22 piece they're only 99 dollars a person you can get two seats for 175. Christy, going into the break, we said the number one problem they fa- that these uh, ladies face in this situation is time management. What's number two? Probably money. Figuring out how to interact with money. They have this love-hate relationship with money. And so it's interesting to see how some of them are motivated by wanting to stay home with their kids. They want to contribute to the family income. But then at the same time, they're conflicted because they feel guilty charging or they have friends that ask for something free or at cost. And so they feel like they need to take care of them. And so they're, they're really having trouble, not only just breaking even, which is hurting their family budget, but also making a profit and understanding the inherent goodness of business and the goodness of making a profit and serving the marketplace. And so you're really seeing the struggle. So we're going to, we're going to hit on money hard at this event to really help them understand not only the necessity of the, of, of making money and profit, but the goodness of it, the goodness of doing business well. And when you do business well, you're, the profit is the applause your customers give you, Ken Blanchard says. And Rabbi Lappin talks about it, and thou shalt prosper, that when you, do, do, when you serve, mm-hmm. that your customers give you certificates of appreciation with president's faces right. on them. Right. And you should accept the certificate. Right. And, and you've done nothing wrong. But there's a shame or a guilt about that as if I'm somehow, I, I'm doing this for the passion. I'm not doing this for the money. Right. And there's a separation there, isn't there? Well, and I, I hear them say interesting things, too, like, well, I enjoy it so much, I feel guilty charging. Like, you shouldn't make money because you're having a good time when you're painting or sewing or whatever the, the skill or craft your business is around. They also feel um, guilty charging because many of them don't value it themselves. Well, it's so easy for me. Well, I don't, I mean, it's not that good of a painting. And so I'm, and nobody would probably want to pay for this. So they have a little bit of a struggle with the belief in it and belief in the business and the product themselves. So of course you communicate that to the marketplace and then you're teaching people what your value is and what the, what the product is worth. Yeah. Sometimes you just charge enough. They think it's valuable. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Crystal's with us in Las Vegas. Crystal, your question for Christy Wright. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. My husband and I want to start a family within the next year, but I'm concerned how to keep my business alive directly after giving birth. I have a home-based business. I serve as a virtual assistant, and I have a very loyal uh, recurring client base. Um, however, I don't have enough retained earnings uh, to feel comfortable hiring an assistant to take over in, in a, maybe a short-term absence after giving birth. Well, I would say there's a real... Um there, there's something very genuine whenever you just share your heart with people. Um, and so if you if you were to communicate to your client base right now, I know you said you have a client base, and let them know your plans and your intentions of, I'm, I'm planning to start a family, and here's my plan for maternity leave. Here's what my schedule will look like. Here's when I'll be, we'll be back. You can provide some solutions for them of either referral in the meantime, but then say, I would love your business when you come back. But for you, if it's important for you to have a maternity leave, for you to take that time off, then simply communicating that to your client base. You may lose a few, but a lot of times when you're honest and upfront, and especially around something so beautiful and wonderful of starting a small business, or I'm I'm sorry, starting a family, um, then a lot of times the business will still be there. A lot of times the people will kind of stay with you through that because they understand. And it's like I said, we're in a relational business here. And so a lot of times if you build that relationship, then if if you've served them well, they'll still be there. It's different than a corporate job where you do family leave act and that kind of thing. I mean, you and Rachel just both went through that this this year, Right. Uh, both of you having the baby. And I noticed with both of you, because you're very much self-employed working here. Right. I mean, you, you, as speakers, as personalities, you guys have things you have to, you just can't lay it down for 12 right. whole weeks. Right. Uh, and so you guys are not working full time yet. Right. Still way after normal maternity leave. Right. But in return, what happened was your first couple of weeks after the birth was very intense and it was completely silent. Mm-hmm. And then you 
started re-engaging gradually right. during what would have been a normal maternity leave. Right. Maybe that would work. Well, and I, too, we planned ahead, and I don't know if this would work for your business with being a virtual assistant if people need things on a week by week basis. But something that I manage regularly um, is my social media and my blog content, and my videos. And so, what I did during the months of uh, November to January was I shot a ton of videos, I wrote a ton of blogs, I planned a ton of social, and I had those scheduled to go out even when I was at home with my baby covered, you know, in burp cloths and wearing yoga pants. So things were still happening in the marketplace representing my brand. So I don't Rachel know if that did the exact same. Thing. Yes. And I don't you know if that would work bit, for your yeah. for your business with virtual being a virtual assistant. If there is work you could do ahead of time or schedule for your clients, that would probably help as well for you to give a little get a little bit of leave. Jessica is in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi Jessica, how are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. Your question for Christy. Well, first of all, Dave, you're awesome. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, Christy, um uh, I am a female hunter. And I really enjoy hunting. Uh, my husband and I go quite a few places, and I'm a lot of times the only female. And for the longest time, I have wanted to do, like, either a blog or um, even an article in a magazine every month. Um, and I want to call it Ladies and Lanyards, and Lanyards. I love it. That's neck. fun. I love it. Because I, I have a lot of stories about being the only female, and, you know, com- sometimes some of the issues that we have that the men don't worry you know, don't worry about and um, about being a female hunter. And I, I wanted to know I'm not good with technology. Um, I mean, I can write essays all day and write things, but I don't know, like, where I would start to get maybe a blog or even if you think getting into a magazine would be better. Um, I'm not even worried about the money part. Um, I just want to empower other women, you know, that, that are trying to get into sure. hunting and may be intimidated, you know. Sure, absolutely. Um, that's very cool. That is very cool. So I think the first the good starting point would be your blog. Um, you need to have some writing samples before you would be brought into, um, you know, to write for a magazine, for example, most likely. So you want to have some, some writing okay. samples. Um, it, you know, you really, uh, there needs to be a strategy for your blog, though. Anybody can start a blog, and a lot of the blogs out there, there's billions of blogs, they don't have a strategy. They just, uh, it's random stories, and there's rambling, et cetera. So I would really encourage you to kind of map out just a strategy. Um, it can be very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Why do you want to start a blog? I think you said you want to empower other women. So that's a great statement. I want to start this blog to empower other women. And then, and then what do you, um, you know, what are you kind of driving towards? So if, if your blogs are going to be around specific to the hunting business or just women in non-traditional industries or how you want to structure it, just mapping out a little bit of strategy on the front end will really help you build it. The platform and physically uh, creating a blog is not hard. You know, there's templates out there that make it super easy for you to do. Um, even if you didn't want to do it yourself with a, like a WordPress template or something that's available to you, you could find someone that would easily, uh, you know, a teenager in a garage or someone that you know in your, your community or church, I'm sure that you could barter with or um, pay a little bit of money and they would get it up and running for you. But you really just want to have a strategy before you start writing because if not, it can easily become uh, cluttered and, and your, your audience doesn't know what to expect how, how from you. How does she draw readers then? Where she go get her readers? Well, you're going to want, I mean, you start with your community. You start mm-hmm. with your, your community, whether that's social media. Are you on social media? I got her on hold. Go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so you'll start with social media and then you'll start, you know, with your community, that your immediate networks and you start putting it out there and letting people know, okay, here, I'm doing this blog, I'm doing this thing and let them share it with you. But your content has to be good. I mean, that's yeah. that's really key for your blog to be successful. There's would, a lot of bloggers tweet, that people don't read. Li- I would tweet links at hunting celebrities, uh, whoever that is. I don't know who that is, but man, gun people and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Tweet links in because if guys picked that up and read it, they would hand it to their wife. Mm-hmm. And go, you know, hey, read this. Come with you me. Know, yeah, that kind <laughs> I want of, you to come yeah, hunting exactly, with me. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, that that could be a dream come true for a lot of folks. So very cool. Christy Wright's been our guest this half hour. This is exciting. It is. Congratulations. Thank you. It's going to be big. It's huge. The tickets are already flying out the door. I knew they would. But this is amazing. You guys, thank you for the response. The the, the event is called Business Boutique. It's November sixth and seventh in Nashville. A whole lineup of speakers. Businessboutique.com. You can check it out at DaveRamsey.com. It's $99 a person. That's the early bird price if you get it early. Now, this is equipping women to make money doing what they love. Talk about huge. This is an economic force we're getting ready to unleash, baby. Here we go. (laughs) I love it. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.